Alrighty, a few people asked us to share a little bit about our passage down to New Zealand from New Caledonia. So on this passage we did something different we don't normally do, we normally sail alone. But here we are going to be three boats sailing from New Caledonia to New Zealand. And these are mates that we've met through social media. When we met them they didn't have boats. Um, they've all tell us that they've been inspired by the videos and interacting uh, with us and various other sailors about sailing and Darren and Elena in the front of the photograph uh, have a 70 ton monohull they've purchased called Animus. At the back is Ewan and Ewan has purchased a lagoon for 40 called Coffee Cat uh, similar to MP and alongside him is Pete, Big Pete, who's uh, assisting Ewan on these passages and then of course Anna and myself on our Lagoon 440. So two Lagoon 440s and one monohull, 70 ton monohull, um, all of us friends sailing together down to New Zealand. So there's Coffee Cat and they're on their way to the fuel dock now. Getting ready to get fuel. We're doing a lot of motoring on this trip. That is our uh, Captain Coffee Cat there. And Big Pete behind him. Well, we're leaving Numea. Goodbye Numea. What a fantastic place it's been. Well, okay, before we leave, we've obviously been discussing weather and what type of weather we can expect to get on our route. What type of passage this will be. The direction of travel is going to be southeast. That's going to be our course over ground if we followed a rum line, which is the shortest distance between two points. But weather being weather, it doesn't always work out that way. One sometimes has to go, particularly in this region, with the weather systems. Now in our case we've been watching weather for about 10 days and this is as good as it gets. It looked a lot worse when we initially started looking at it but now the low pressure system down um, at the bottom of the screen on the left hand side is um, it's kind of lightened up a little bit but it's still got a big weather front associated with it and it's due to a convergence with a high pressure system, a slower high pressure system to the east. And in this convergence, we are going to obviously have friction, we're going to have lightning, and we have lightning warnings on these various models that we've been using. So it's going to be a race to get to New Zealand before the actual weather front passes over the Cape, because we want to avoid the worst of the waves and the weather that arrives there. Uh, Wednesday midday. Um, it's looking pretty good, leaving there. Let's just put the cursor there, check the wind and everything. Yes, yeah, so at this point I'm talking to the two boats about weather, what they see, what I see. So we've got 12 knots wind speed, 10 knots wind speed, direction 25 degrees. And because we're following convergence of the two systems, wind's nice direction there. It's actually allowing us to get a rum line, more or less a rum line down to New Zealand, which is really cool. But yet it's pretty twitchy because there's going to be lightning activity there. Say so Wednesday's turned out to suddenly be good. It wasn't early on. Just got to watch this thing then. That was coming a lot quicker earlier on. We've studied wave models, we've studied all sorts of other models and we're very happy apart from this particular weather front that comes over us which has a lot of lightning associated with us with it all the way from New Caledonia down to New Zealand. This is actually a picture taken from Wendy. We're also using um, weather routing in Predict Wind to try and establish the boat speed and where the impact of the electrical systems will find us. Well apart from this is a fantastic passage but it's very obvious to us that we are going to have to deal with this front crossing or passing overhead at some stage on the journey because it occupies the entire route. Leaning towards a very conservative side for the boat to make sure that we can be in different positions at different times. We've set up our polar speeds on the boat, our polar diagram. That's the type of sail, the point of sail and what sort of speeds the boat will get. The wind strength and direction, the size of the waves, the direction of the waves. It's so that we can work out where we would be along the route. Of course this is important when you're trying to time your passage uh, to coincide with where the boat will be as the storm passes overhead. Yeah, you can see on Predict Wind, it's not looking too good for us right there. 
but it's it's also not going to be with us for long so we have to just work our way through it Darren on his beautiful motorhome called Adamus 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 on our way to New Zealand the good 440 two of us together coffee cat there we're on empty because we don't have access to internet on the boat, we don't have Starlink. Starlink's not operating out um, in the middle of the ocean yet at an affordable price. We hope that changes soon. We use a Garmin inReach. And for this reason, we decided to have a land-based weatherman, especially because we've got all of these low pressure, high pressure, and different systems running around, and it's volatile. We decided to have a weatherman called Bruce Buckley, uh, who did a fantastic job, by the way, keeping us abreast of the actual movements um, of the various high and low pressure systems. Okay, I've also taken Open CPN, which we use as part of our navigation just on the laptop. It's kind of a backup and for planning. And I've marked out all the areas, depending on the sort of average speed and distances, I've marked out the areas of electrical activity um, where we're going to encounter them and I've marked out the time that it starts the time that it dissipates and it just gives me a good feeling of what and where we we can encounter these things right so we actually do encounter the storm it's always at night of course and we are using our new BNG radar with Doppler system to identify system movements and where we are within the storm it's absolutely fantastic I really love this technology some big weather systems running around. We've got Coffee Cat behind us. We've got Adamus. We ran up in the rain and we've reefed uh, to number two, number three on the Genoa. And it's all good. Fortunately, Anna's awake and uh, woke me up from a slumber to see this, uh, these systems building. So we're gonna be in for quite a frontal system here. Love the new Doppler system of this um, BNG. It's fantastic. Okay, just backing up a little bit. As the systems are building, we've transferred wirelessly the position of the storm, uh, the main cloud that is approaching us, onto OpenCPN. And we can actually track the system um, by using it as an AIS, for example. So it shows the closest point of contact between the movement of the storm and the movement of the boat by means of that little line at the bottom, that dotted line, shows where we will actually encounter the storm. Now the trick is obviously to maneuver the boat into a safe position. You can see by the red arrow that the storm is approaching us, the system is approaching us. There's a little area of dissipation starting to happen below the boats and we are thinking to try and maneuver the boat so that that dissipation, which seems to be opening up and becoming a gate, moves over the top of the boats, with the lightning hopefully happening to either side of the boats. It was a good call. Exactly what we thought would happen happened, and we managed to have the boats in the correct position for the system to bypass us on either side. It's a great feeling at sea when you've managed to dodge some of these systems. They're coming past you, they're dissipating, and there's clarity or clear skies behind one. Yeah, so this was the electrical activity um, from the front that came over in here. Coffee Cat and Adamus. It's always such a great feeling when one has come through the night, you've had this electrical storms and so on, and you are now into daytime and the morning is beautiful and you know there are no further dangers except we still have to keep pace on the boats because of that low pressure system lying off the cape of new zealand and we want to arrive before that comes over the cape and this is where we normally sleep on passage when we've got storms and things like that we've made a double bed out here on the patio we can pull the canvas back to look into the ocean but we can also zip the canvas closed it's full canvas so it's it's really made for passage making that's our drogue in the corner that ball uh, we've made up for MP just in case we should need it and as you can see it's a beautiful day there's the man in the middle of the ocean cruising along on his dinghy and this is what boys do when they're bored in the middle of the ocean.
are and there she is there's new zealand so happy to be arriving here in this beautiful beautiful country the land of the long white cloud but as we arrived we could see the mist starting to roll in over the mountains and creeping towards us across the water it became evident we we're going to be in the thick of it so <laughs> Once again, the radar had to come into play here to make sure we uh, didn't collide with any boats and so forth and so on. And once again, we were really happy that we could have this radar system by BNG um, and to also have it plot onto open CPN and, and, and have good eyesight out there for any objects in the water. Uh, thankfully for the radar we were able to identify where boats were you could just spot them in the mist it was surprising that they are still out there but they're obviously used to this and there were a lot of boats actually um, disguised under the cover of this fog or mist and um, yeah so it was quite an experience coming um, into Opua okay everybody so sorry it's such a long one but uh, i know a lot of people were really interested to see some of our passage making and what we encountered uh, coming from new caledonia to new zealand it's an amazing country we're really looking forward to being here um, i've got a new granddaughter Anna and i have a new granddaughter and i am grandpa pirate so i'm really looking forward to seeing her and to introduce grandpa pirate to her cheers everybody MP out.